the way to get to fold three through the Plano Public Library is our website. If you have a subscription at home to Fold3, it can look a lot like what we have. There may be a few um, changes. Uh, there are some coming and I will explain that to you shortly. You do, if you go through our website to use Fold3, you do have to have a library card. Uh, and that means that you have to live in the area to be able to get the library card. And we can talk about that later if you have any further questions about getting the library card. When you go to planolibrary.org, uh, you can click on the get to the library. And we're going to go through the genealogies page. You can also go through learn to get to fold three. So we're going to go to visit and scroll down a little ways to get to the uh, eight major places in the library system. And we're going to the genealogy center. The genealogy center is located at the Haggard Library down in the lower level. So first you have to scroll past all of the information about COVID and you can see many of the things that we offer, Collin County images, the different things about our collection, genealogy resources, our blog, a little bit about it, partners and donations. And if you have a question, there's the Ask a Genealogy Librarian and Book a Genealogy Librarian. Also at the very bottom are our past classes um, that we have done or provided. There are two that are not here yet. They are on the library's YouTube page, um, but soon the two genea other two uh, genealogy classes will be added. And so will Fold3. They will eventually um, be added to our genealogy center page. So the way to get to Fold3 from the genealogy center page is to use the genealogy resources online. You can go by the link or click on the icon or picture. And you can choose genealogy databases. We have things about Plano, Collin County, Texas, and United States history or information. We are going to look at Fold3 today. And what you do is you'll click on this. And I will tell you, uh, I'm going to change it just a second. Um, if you are um, at home, you will have to put a library card number in and then uh, the pin, which is the last four digits of your phone number. But if you're in the library, it just pops up like it did for me. This is what I would call the old version of Fold3. There is a new version coming soon. They have not said when the date is, and we will look at that in just a little bit, uh, what the new version looks like. But my assumption may be uh, is maybe November the 11th, since that's Veterans Day, uh, Fold3 likes to do things on uh, special military uh, days or celebrations. And that could be when it is, I'm not sure. But what we're going to do is look at Fold3 uh, and look at three possible ways of finding information. And I will tell you, there's not a handout for this because it's just kind of, um, an ad lib type of day where I show you the big broad, the brows, and then the special shirt search, sorry, um, uh, ways to find information. And there are times on some sites that I say, don't use the big broad search. Ancestry has one and I just hate it. And so does family search, but it works with fold three in some ways. So you could, in this big, this is what I would call the big broad book uh, search engine. And 
we're going to put in broom. And as you can see, I've tried other things, other combinations. But first, we're going to try broom in all records, mainly because I just want to show you what happens. Uh, so it tells me I have 130,000 results with the word broom. And this one is really uh, kind of fun because you can tell right away, this is not a person. This is the broom corn or broom material, not a person. Uh, and then there's, of course, a, a person's name and other information. Um, so you know, that gives you a hint as to why sometimes you do need to narrow things down. Um, I can narrow down and look for the brooms by a war, a title, a place, a publication. There's all kinds of things that I could use to uh, narrow down my search because 130,000 is way more than I want. And uh, I just wanted to show you right off the bat what happens if you put in the name. Of course, I would never try Smith or Jones, but Broom is uh, my family's uh, surname. And this is sometimes how we spell it. Sometimes we spell it with the E at the end, which would make the change a little different. Um, but one of the things that happens with Fold 3 is it looks at the word that I put in there as the root. So if there's a broom with an E, that's counted in this 130,000. If it's broom filled or broom filled, which I've seen both ways, that counts in this 130,000. If it's mech broom, they show up in this 130,000. It, um, <clears throat> excuse me, it's not always going to go to an exact. There are some places where you can tell it exactly broom without the E or broom filled, um, but I still like to do the root because I do find mistakes, you know, handwriting and then. Um, uh, transcriptions or and or OCR, which they use often, can still misread a name. So I prefer to do the short name and see what else I can find. Um, but this is what happens with the broad name. So I could go back to home and we're going to start over again. Does anybody have any questions about the broad search yet? Okay. It doesn't look like we have any so far. Okay. Because that one, it, it is fun. It's a way to find out whether you want anything in particular. Um, I started uh, using Fold3 before it was Fold three, and I can't even remember now what the old name used to be because um, it's been around for a while now. But there weren't, but just maybe the Civil War and Revolutionary War information that was available. So it's rather fun to see how much it's changed in their searching and the information they have available. Uh, I started out when there was probably just a couple hundred thousand total records than 582 million, which is kind of fun to see. Um, when we look at this, you could browse all the titles, which I'm going to just click on to give you an idea that, you know, how many titles are out there. But some of those belong to Revolutionary War, some with the War of 1812, and, and so forth. Um, when you go to just the Civil War, we get 93 million records. Um, if you wanted to just look at the widow pensions, uh, you can see there's just 2 million records right now. And 
it's only 21% complete. That's why you can't find the pension records like you want online. The major reason that I understand the Civil War pensions are not online um, is because they're scattered across uh, the US in the different states and the records are being scanned and digitized and indexed and transcribed and, and all. And it's just taking a long time for those records to be completed. You can use the Civil War Pensions Index and that should be complete or almost. And you can find people there and then know where to search for that pension record, who to ask for, uh, where to go to order that pension record if you can't find it online. Um, and again, we'll talk a little bit more about that. I'm kind of going off, but I just wanted to show you how you could just choose a title if you wanted to, to search or a war. Now, I went the other day looking at World War I and um, I was looking for a, a name, uh, but I'm just gonna use ours today. And I still get over a thousand results. This is um, a little hard though too, because where were they during 1918, 1919 uh, in showing up in the registration? Well, part of my family was living in Mississippi. So I'm going to use this as their place. And, uh, Sorry. Maybe I'll just do it this way. There we go. So now we knock it down to 207 in World War One, and most of them are going to be the World War One draft registration cards. And this is one of the best places to find information out about your person. Carol? Um, yes. Sorry to interrupt. We do have a, a question. Um, someone asks, um, they say, I used Ancestry for genealogi genealogical research. Can one attach records from the Plano Library version of Fold 3 to my family tree member members? I can access many records from Ancestry, but don't have visibility of the original record, mostly indices. Okay. Um, uh, as far as I understand, that it does say save to Ancestry and I would have to sign in to my Ancestry. Um, we could, well, it is looking like it's gonna add it to my Ancestry. I don't think you can see that. That's on another screen. Can y'all see that? Uh, that we just, something else popped up? We just see the little pop-up that says sign in to Ancestry. Okay. It it acted like it was going to let me add it to my and to my ancestry um, documentation. Mm -hmm. um, but I wasn't going to follow through because I don't know for sure if this is the George Washington that I want. Um, because Rebecca Broom is not my family name. So <laughs> <laughs> But I have a George Washington broom, so that's why I stopped going, hey, look at that. Um, <laughs> so um, possibly. So possibly by clicking on the green box that says save to ancestry. And I'm just trying to make sure um, I am still in the library's uh, fold three. So it looks like I can add it to my ancestry tree but I have to sign in for it to go to that ancestry tree. I would have to follow through from that point and I'm, I'm not gonna do that right now. She, Joyce said she'd give it a try. Adam. Okay, all right. Thanks. Sure. Um, so my favorite thing with uh, Fold3 is getting to see uh, the original items. Uh, 
Uh, and so that's always the best part of all of this is uh, and the draft registration cards can show up in ancestry and then again some of them may not um, it's uh, just depending on uh, what it is that they've entered see how it does have an s at the end instead and then of course broom is a first name in uh, that's always fun, uh, you know, poor person, Broom is their first name. Okay, I'm sorry if anybody else is named Broom here. <laughs> um, but so I could also, 207, um, that's a good round number, and I would probably just browse all Brooms from Mississippi um, because there's several different Brooms that I have in my uh, family. See, that makes me wonder what's going on uh, with a name like that. But one of the things I can do too while I'm thinking about it is that I'm looking at 20 and I can look at 50. Come on. It's not going to let me today. Um, but you usually can look up to 50 on a page and that helps whenever you do, because this is like 10 pages you have to look through. And depending on what you're doing and who you're looking for. Uh, now, whenever I go to the Civil War looking at service records, I have a bunch of relatives that were in the Civil War and they were from Mississippi. And so I would look through all of the hits that I get for the Civil War service records just because I want to see all of them. Of course, my main focus would be on one person, but if I see um, Hardy or some of the other brooms, I might, you know, pick on them just because they were my uh, Luke brothers and I need their information to sometimes find Luke. And um, so let's go back. One of the things that you can do is say, let's stop working about World War I. I still want to stay in the United States. I still want to stay to Brooms in Mississippi. And now we have 27,000. I really <clears throat> don't look at uh, the census because I get that from Ancestry. And so I'm not worried about the census, but I do want to look at Civil War. And this gives me 82 hits for um, brooms in the Civil War. And there's my hearty. Uh, and um, you know, some of these other names are probably related to who I want. No, there he is. There's my Luke. So what happens when you look at the original service record? This is another thing I want to try to explain to y'all. When you're looking at the record itself, it told us there were three pages. So I can look at this by clicking on the next button and read through the different things that are available about my broom. If I keep clicking, I go to the next person and seeing what's available for him. Another way to do this is to click on this film strip and you can see everybody that's showing up and maybe I want to look at others in the name. Here's Hardy and Hardy. And I can see if there's just one or two service record pages or whatever else is available on them. The other thing, let's go back. Sorry, there we are. That you can do when you find um, something that you do want is to go to the tools and you can download and 
it'll say entire in, uh, page, select a region, you know, so like if I just wanted a certain part of the page, or it'll do the entire file. Sometimes that doesn't pop up and sometimes it does. We haven't ever figured out why. Um, I think it's because you've overwhelmed it. I, I just don't know. We have never figured it out. Um, but if I did do entire file, it's going to save all three pages. And it's not going to let me at the moment because what it wants me to do is to get a free membership. So I don't want to do that. See, they have fixed it from what I believe in the past because they're really wanting you to eventually get your own membership. So I'm going to do one page and you can see that it's down in the bottom corner and then I could click on it and I could save it to my thumb drive or I could print it out. If I print it, it doesn't like to print the whole page. That's why I, uh, then you would have to, let's see. No. Hmm. That's why I save it though. Actually, I don't like to print them anymore. And I don't know whether it's because of what computer I'm on is why it didn't want to print, but I would, uh, then click on this to save it. Now, it all depends on the um, type of saving uh, what you use in on your computer to look at a picture or a document to save and as to how it's going to look and what you're going to get. So this part, it's a little different for each person depending on what computer you're at but you should be able to either save it or print it out. Um, if, and one of the other things we've learned is to add the bookmark or to add an annotation, you need to have it uh, a subscription to it for yourself. So I, you know, that's when you start looking at this and realize I really like this, I want to do it, I'm going to, um, join up and add Fold3 to my collection uh, of databases, you know, um, and that, you know, but that's up to you. If you don't have very many people in the military, um, you know, that's the reason why I don't have Fold3 on my computer at home because I don't need it. I just use it here at the library. So we've picked out an image. We've looked at it and saw that you can do a film strip to look at something or hide it. The eye is to be able to see everything on the side um, to see what this is coming from. There are ways to copy and save it because you'll need that whenever it comes to your citation. Um, and there's the contributions. That's for later. That's another thing. I'm sorry. Um, or you can change the pages, the screens, and look. It's thinking now because. Um, so that's what happens by looking at an image. Let's go. I'm going to go back to home for a minute. So what I did is first I showed you the discover and you would just use this as your broad search, or you could go down and choose a war or a, a time period. You could then choose um, a title if you wanted to and start searching in there. World War I and forward, there's not always a lot of records available. Um, there are bits and pieces of information, but the service records and any um, uh, types of records like that are not available online yet. Um, there 
will be a day, I'm sure, but anything before World War I, you have a better chance of finding a service record or any information about their death or uh, other things um, that happened to them. Uh, the World War I Ford is more of a, a lockdown. It's also more of they have a lot to do and scan and make it available. Um, and it's still, you know, a hundred years or so old. And so that's why a lot of things are not there yet, but there will be someday. Um, for now, service records and anything from World War I forward, you have to ask for from National Archives. Of course, problem with that is they are, have been closed and they're slowly opening um, but they're still only doing emergency uh, research, uh, mostly. So it's going to be a while before records that we want for our um, veterans that have passed away that you're just doing genealogy on uh, are searched for for you. Um, one of the things to is this is showing what there's 52 publications 52 books or items or uh, databases records that are available for world war one of course when you look at this the u.s veterans gravesite it goes all the way back to 1775 and as forward as 2019. hey cheryl yes Hi, quick question. Um, mm -hmm. Does the census, the census only goes back 70 years? Is that the same for military records? And it's, are li living veterans not, their records aren't available? It, it is, you're right. Uh, now it's um, 72, 72 for the census. Okay. Yeah, yeah, I had to think about it because we're, we're getting close, very close to the 1950 to being online. Um, for the census. And on the National Archives, um, I think we went in and looked at that a couple of months ago. So my memory is not very good, but it's like 68, not 72. Okay. As to what is considered too current and you won't be able to get it um, without asking for it. Uh, you know, like, and you have to have uh, all your ducks in a row as to who they are and how they're related to you and why you want that information. Right. Okay. Does that help? I think so. Does that help? Because that was pretty clear. Yeah, it it is um, hard. And that's why I keep waiting since it's over 100 years now. You know, when we hit 2015, I was like, "Ooh, it's getting close. They should be, you know, making World War I items available soon. But then I think about how much more that is and all the work that's gonna go into it. And they're not even completely done with the Civil War records. So, <laughs> you know, that, uh, you know, uh, that's my guesstimate as to why it's still a long ways before we'll see World War I, you know. Um, and but there are some specialty records that are available available like as you can see here the uh, transport service passenger list um, there are some things for world war ii um, those that died at pearl harbor those uh, there are things like who has uh, gotten uh, received a Medal of Honor or the Purple Heart and things like that. Those uh, or uh, prisoner of war. There are some records, but they're not all here either on FOD3. Some of that is available at the National Archives, which was another class that I we taught earlier. So and that is recorded and put online about our um, uh, military records. Uh, one one more question. Sure. 
Um, if there are errors in any of the military records, that, like transcription errors, are there ways to submit a correction similar to like what goes on with Ancestry? Um, you would have to be a member in, in uh, to you know to do that, and it depends on. Uh, and it may be actually to go through the National Archives, but it all, you know, so it's going to depend on where the error is in the transcription or does the page itself have a mistake okay. on it. So, and lastly, is there a Purple Heart database? You, uh, <laughs> um, all kinds well, of good questions. <laughs> yes, and, and that, that's a one Doug would know right off the bat. You know, um, I'd have to, to just Google because there's one of them that um, one of the um, awards are, uh, is not complete. I mean, or, or not because of how it's handed out. He told me that one time, and I don't know. I'd have to. I don't know. That would be something probably the National Archives could answer uh, better than I could at this time. All right. Well, great question. Thank you. All right. So um, search is a lot of different ways, as we've kind of showed. Um, I will do one more, and that is the non-military records. One of the, first off, when um, they created this uh, list, um, I was kind of disappointed that they put the African American and Native American under non-military records, but then <clears throat> that makes sense, right? Um, so the full three has a lot of good information for the national excuse me, for the Native Americans and for the African Americans. Um, but you have to find them through non-military. And as you can see, for just the popular ones, census shows up and naturalization records and there's city directories and there's newspapers. And mixed into this is the Dawes records because these are in alphabetical order. But uh, we have uh, anti-slavery, um, the, see, we have the Boston Public Library collections, the orphan home records, and you have to um, see all the city directories. Um, and then there's the Guion Miller rolls and, um, where is, I'm trying to remember um, the African-American, why is it not jumping out at me? Because I thought it was right there under African-American. But there it is there. So I'm going to click here on the African American collection on the left side. And while it waits to load, Cheryl, uh -huh. um, are the newspapers is. that the you know what gets found in Fold Three that are newspaper clippings? Are they coming from newspapers.com? Do you know? No, they're not. They are from a lot smaller newspapers and some that aren't anywhere else but here. So it, I will look at that in just a minute. Um, yeah. So it's not jumping out as easily unless you choose African American collection under the publication type. And then you can see all the Civil War records for the unions and the court slave records and anything else that is available for the African American uh, records. Um, so uh, this is another way to look at items. And then what we'll do is look at, there's 53 titles and you can see some of them are from Kentucky and they really 
they are adding more. It used to be just a small uh, amount, but it looks like it's all Kentucky, doesn't it? And then there's DC, um, Indiana, uh, and a few other places, but from what, and then they're very old. Uh, I tend to forget about looking here, I have to tell you, because they only have some of the older years, very older years, and smaller newspapers. But when you're looking for newspapers and you're desperate to find something, um, this is when you start doing that. Like, look at, let's look at, uh, now that we know newspapers are available at Fold3, newspapers are available at newspapers.com. Um, you know, Genealogy Bank, um, Chronicling America, then, you know, you want to look at them. And you can see for this one, well, there's just four pages for this newspaper from 1901, January 10th. Um, and then a way to go back is to just hit that arrow key if you want to look at a different newspaper. Um, but it is uh, one of those things that I tend to forget because I think Fold 3 is, I think, first military. But another one um, that is worth looking at sometimes is uh, city directories. There's not a lot of them. Uh, but there are some years uh, worth having fun and looking at. And the other day when I found a city directory, I have to tell you that on these older city directories, sometimes it's fun just to uh, look at a page because they'll give you history of that city. Um, we found out uh, about one city being the, oh my gosh, what was the mine, Bethany? Uh, anyway, it was a, a special mining town and I had no idea until I started reading the history in the first pages of the city directory. So city directories are great even for some history. And then trying to find uh, a company uh, or a business in that city directory. Okay, I digress. That's not what I was here about. <laughs> but I just had to tell you, um, back to home. Because uh, now what we want to do is to go into browse. Um, if you're not sure what you're looking for, but you just want to look and see what is available. Browsing can do that for you. We're going to look at, there's 632 titles. And in those 632 titles are that 600, what, what was it? Let's go back to home. One more time. Okay. So 582 million records, that means pages and information, and they're all from the 632 titles. That's what's really kind of fun to think that there's could be on some of these a million records in that one place. And this is looking at everything all Fold3 content. And, the, and you can see some of the places that are included in the 632 uh, documents or uh, databases or collections. And out of this are the 500, I already forgot, 500 million uh, documents. So it gets overwhelming to think of what they have done and what is still left to add to this collection. So sometimes it's fun just to browse 
and see what's going on. I have a feeling that we may not be able to read all of this. Who knows? Oh. Schmuckle. Okay. Schmickle. I love that. I picked a fun name, didn't I? But there's all these things to look at. You can go back to the previous page, or I could have clicked the arrow and just started all over again. Um, so these are, this is one way to browse and look at everything that's available and to have fun depending on what you're wanting. Everything is in alphabetical order, as you can see. So sometimes you can find something that is current. Um, nope, it doesn't tell me here. I would like to go and see. Oh, I know. I'm going to go back just a second. All right, so it's 100% complete. So I could see the informa uh, information about who this person was that uh, died during the conflict of the Persian Gulf War. That doesn't give me a lot of information, but I did find some information about them. And then I see there's something about the Cherokee Indian Agency in Tennessee. So this is what browsing can you do for you. And um, it's usually, um, to me, a lot of fun because that's when I find things I was just playing around with and wanted to see what was available. What I want to do now is show you the new look and give you some confidence in knowing that with the new look, just the front page looks different, but all the back pages, all the things in searching and all are still operating the same way. But knowing my look when I've tried to teach people and know that things are coming that are going to change, it probably won't be quite the same next week or the week after. Um, but Fold3 is very simple in a lot of ways in the searching, and I wouldn't give up. Uh, but I would come in to Fold3 knowing what I want. If it is George Broom, and he was born in 1888, and he died in 1930, well, then I know what time period I'm looking at to see if I can find anything about him in the military uh, from 1888 to uh, 1930. And more than likely, that means probably just World War I and uh, maybe just a draft card. You know, so that would be some of the things I know that I'm looking for. If we're looking for somebody that was alive from 1780 or 1770, let's say, to 1860 uh, or so, then I would look at Revolutionary War, possibly, and War of 1812, and maybe even the Mexican Wars and the early Indian Wars. You know, so those are the things that you think about when you come in, you want to have an idea of who you're looking for. So the new look is uh, under preview our new homepage right now. I, I like this in a lot of ways um, because it gives you images and you can spot things right away. Like the African-American has been pulled out to show up and the Native American and the Vietnam War, we even have uh, uh, non-military shows up, Spanish-American. So there's a lot of um, cool things that are showing up here. 
or if I wanted to, to go to New, Eng to New England, sorry, to United Kingdom, I could go in and look at the Boxer Rebellion um, and uh, do some searching here. I could read through to see what it's all about. What was the Boxer Rebellion? Uh, what kind of information is available? I could click on one of these and search it completely. And it looks like it's, I'm just, I know I shouldn't use Smith, but it's easier when I don't really have a name to then uh, look to see what's available on court marshals in the UK. Um, and then have a little fun there, right? Um, but some of the things to look for when you are going to search is, is it complete? Um, and then you're going to hope that they indexed it well and uh, transcribed everything well. Um, it's just a, uh, so I could, you know, go on and look at the different wars. Um, I thought it was uh, very cool the other day. Oh, um, before I forget, one of the things you have to remember is as long as you're signed in under the Plano Public Library, you don't need to do the start a seven day trial unless you find you fall in love with Fold 3 and you want more than what or, you know, want something all the time and you decide you want the trial for yourself or the database, you know, for under your name. Um, but you have Canada and New Zealand. So there's just lots of um, cool things that are showing up here. Uh, it looks like all they have for New Zealand is World War II appointments, promotions, and transfers. So like that picture. Um, so um, this is the new look, but let's go back. When you are here and you do click on one of these, you get to know that there's 76,000 records on African-Americans. You can see all of them just like before. You can search them just like before, and it's telling you there's 100%. So it's just kind of a, a, a new look to it, but it will find you the same information, and you can always start, you know, nope, I figured that. Um, Try Smith. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, just a little bit. Um, and I'd have to read a little bit more about uh, what all is in the anti slavery pages. Um, but uh, it's just. As I said, it's kind of fun to just browse sometimes. Sometimes browsing in something uh, helps you find more than you ever thought. I was on Denton Public's webpage one time and browsing all of their genealogy things and found something about the Broom family, our distant cousins that were living in Denton County. So you never know what you're going to find. Let's go back to browse. No, wait, let's go back to home. Um, but the new look will be like this. And don't be afraid, like I said, if the start a new trial pops up on your page, as long as the Plano Public Library is hanging out at the top, then you're fine. If you do try to, like earlier, uh, I wanted to, uh, well, what I'll do is I 
I'm trying to find something with more than one page, but hmm. if the, the few things that are not available is the add a bookmark or annotate or comment, because um, that's what's showing up here is somebody has put in uh, certain words and uh, annotated them or uh, added a correction. You know, you see that here, but that's not going to be available unless you have a membership. And then that's when you can uh, suggest things. With Ancestry, I found broom spelled wrong. And so I had to, the, actually the whole thing was spelled wrong since the names and, and everything. So it was kind of uh, a big deal whenever I made those changes on, on Ancestry. Um, sometimes though, you know, they will uh, put two or three um, different spellings or something because it's what the indexer put and what you may have sent in to them and then what somebody else may have sent in to them. So those are the things that uh, could happen whenever you um, find a, an error and you turn it in. Um, the other thing we found was that it wouldn't uh, uh, let me download the whole, if it was four pages, it wouldn't let me do that all at one time. I had to do one page at a time. Um, it, the only way to download a whole four or five pages or whatever is that um, I would have to be a member myself. There are, at times, you get lucky and there's a service record or pension records or something that are 50 pages long with all kinds of good hits in them. And you're so excited because it gives you a marriage record and a death record and um, just all kinds of great things. And then sometimes you open up something and it gives you just a page. And it's not even enough to prove that that's really them, like this service record, you know. One of my favorite things is to find a service record, but this is all you'll ever find. And is this your James Broom? I don't know. Alabama, probably not. Florida, probably not. But hey, you know, it's still a James Broom and I had Jameses in my family, so I might hold on to it for a while until I can prove it wasn't him or it was him. Um, I'm trying to think if I had anything else to tell y'all about. I've showed you now what happens. I will tell you this is if you want the old page, now that I have the new page, it won't go back to the old page unless I tell it to. So I, that's just something else to note is if I want to use the old page, um, I have to do it, you know, click on it to tell it. I do have one more thing to tell you about, and that's the memorials. This is something, um, again, where if you wanted to add pictures and information, you would have to do that yourself, and that would be to have it as a member. So, Okay, wait, maybe I'm supposed to do it. Okay. Um, hmm. This isn't the right record, but I'll just go with this one because it doesn't have oh no nope, it is the right record sorry I'm talking to myself while I try to find it for you <laughs> um my uncle was in the army in the Vietnam War and um 
what I need to do, because I do have um, a subscription to Fold3, and uh, is I need to get the picture of him, but I don't have a military one. I One of the things I need to do is to get it from my cousin and put that picture here of my uncle. And um, if I wanted to, to add any other facts about him, I could do that. And any stories I have or any other pictures. So Cheryl, are the yes. memorials only allowed for subscribers? Is that like one of the things you get if you? You can look at it without a subscription, but to um, add to it, you have to, you know, so if you go through and you find your, your and everybody has been added that has been, because, uh, you know, like there was my uncle. I did not, uh, the, the military put that record in there. So that's why there's a, he, when he joined and when he was discharged and when his birth date and when his death date, they put that information in. And so, you know, if you are wondering about anybody, that would be one way to do it. And then if you want to update it with the pictures and more information about them, you have to do that. Okay. Okay. Thanks for the clar so, clarification. Yeah. But you have to have a subscription to do that part. But everybody can look at the memorials. And um, uh, this one, we actually helped with the USS Arizona Memorial by uh, giving them information about two people that um, died on the USS Arizona and they were from Collin County. So, but right now I can't think of their names. I should have done that before. I, but uh, they're listed in this. And so it's, um, this one is a big deal that they worked on to, you know, for the Arizona, so. But that, it, the memorials is fun. And then there's the Civil War stories. Um, and again, this is something that is added um, by um, records that they have and then the stories that they are getting. And so it's a new, and as you can see, it said it's a beta that they're adding other things to it. And it may become its own place because Civil War records are the biggest part of what we have on military, at least what I see whenever I'm looking at things. Um, does anybody have any other questions? Do they want to know anything else specific? Um, when I look at the home, I, there's just so much to look at. And I would also suggest the Fold3 Training Center. Um, there are ways at times to look at just the new and updated parts of the collection. Um, and like I said, uh, sometimes here is one of the places to go broad, go by the last name and maybe the last name in a certain war or a certain area first, because then you would see what's available and maybe how to try searching for that name, uh, you know, in many different ways. Did you want to um, let people know how they can uh, submit a question if they have a question after yes. this is over? I think? Yes, um, we, um, we can actually go back on our genealogy uh, page. I'm going to go back one more. So you've gotten to the genealogy center through visit. And now you're on the genealogy center page. 
and down towards the bottom, we have additional assistance. We have Ask a Genealogy Librarian. So if you have a specific question you want, this would be uh, one of the places to go. Um, or you want to book a genealogy librarian. Right now, that's kind of hard to do. We don't always meet in person or uh, talk, but it just depends. Um, really, the best way nowadays um, is to reach us by Ask a Genealogy Librarian and fill in the form. And then there's four of us, and one of us would get back to you um, with answers to your questions or call you to say, let's talk. Um, there's also interlibrary loan. If there is a genealogy book or microfilm or newspaper that you're interested in, you can do that also um, because that is available, but you have to have a library card with us. Um, the only problem is, is it's taking longer for things to come from other libraries because they are just like us where it's we're low on staff we may not be open to the public and we're just trying as fast as we can to answer the genealogy questions y'all send us oh and cheryl someone william suggests um that people subscribe to the fold three email list so they'll yes. get updates that's a good 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 idea i uh, uh i do get messages all the time from fold three um, sometimes I kind of ignore them, but sometimes I'm watching for if they've updated like the Civil War pension records, you know, because that one is going to be great when it's finally 100% complete. Um, then we won't have to use National Archives as much, I think, you know, so you would think they'd work on that. But <laughs> um, I'm gonna stick a link to our upcoming um, oh yes genealogy have, courses if you want to tell them about right. <laughs> we have three left we have the digital um, class that Trey is teaching we have a DNA class and then we have a wrap up of the year and. Um, that's November and December. Um, and then we are meeting next week or two to start planning for uh, January to March. And most and all of our classes are still going to be uh, through Zoom and virtual. Um, and I don't remember what are the exact classes names, but me either. I'm, I'm going to go to the calendar you sent out. Um, <laughs> it, you know, it doesn't show December yet. Oh, I yes. For, You're right. Yeah, I think but it only goes month by month. Digitization basics. Trey's going to try to get, he taught a class on preserving your documents, and he decided that he we needed to go further on uh, digitization don't you just love that word um, <laughs> in how to scan them, how to know what's right, what size and just all kinds of stuff. And then uh, DNA, we talked about the female DNA and now they're going to talk about the male DNA um, aspects and they're in, it's an intermediate class. So you have to kind of know some of the basics, but they always repeat some of the basics in their DNA classes. Um, and we have so much uh, on our list of things to teach next that um, who knows what's coming. We know um, that uh, uh, I don't know, what am I trying to think of? Um, that, that we want to teach a little bit more. We haven't done the courthouse class and we haven't done um, uh, a, a good class just on ancestry or a good class just on family search. Because there are things hiding in those databases sometimes. So 
And I'm looking for the dates for the DNA and the wrap up. Um, I'll see if I can find it. It's those. every other Monday. So yeah. December the 7th. 7th, that's one of them. So mm -hmm. the next one would be the 21st. Is she doing it on the 21st? I think it is because we've been doing them every other week. Yeah. So. And I also put the, a link to all of the, the library's genealogy webinars. So if there were okay. any that you missed and you wanted to catch up, mm -hmm. those are in, in there as well. Yeah, we we are scheduled for Mondays at one o'clock every two weeks. And that's going to happen also from January to March, at least. Um, and uh, some of the uh, classes that all of us are teaching are always on special days or sp specific days and ours are Mondays at 1 p.m. So on the every 14 days unless it's a holiday right so <laughs> <laughs> um, any other questions um, <laughs> it doesn't look like any. They're just saying thank you. Okay. <laughs> Good job, Cheryl. <laughs> <laughs> well, just go, the, the best thing for Fold 3 is click on everything, explore it. It's not going to hurt you. It's fun. <laughs> it's fun to open up because there are so many things and it's more than just military. That's the other thing you have to remember. But that's it for this week. All right. Well, Thank you all for joining. Thank you.